We are on an eight day, 3,250 kilometer journey around South Africa on a mission to test our new overlanding rig in different environments, but more importantly, on a mission to explore and enjoy parts of this country that we've never seen before. So far, we've been through the Eastern Cape, the Northern Cape, the Cedarburg, the West Coast, and back through the Northern Cape, and we've been sticking to the goal of trying to avoid main roads as much as possible, opting to take the gravel back roads whenever we get the opportunity. Today we find ourselves at Buffelsrefeer, just north of the town of Langsburg, and face a drive home that would normally take about 6 or 7 hours if done on the highways. But we've opted to instead split this drive into two days, shortening the driving distance to a mere 300 kilometers or so per day, but intentionally choosing the slow, bumpy gravel back roads in order to take us through some remote and very beautiful locations as we leave the Karoo behind us and cross a number of mountain ranges on our way to the much greener coastal belt. So that's the challenge. Take the gravel roads whenever possible. Dirt is good, tar is bad. This could get interesting, but for now, we find ourselves on the banks of the Buffels Rafir, making some coffee and taking the morning slow. Well, I think the time has come to, uh, to try a different coffee and a different way of making coffee. Uh, so far, on this trip, we've been using uh, Hazel's Harmony from Paul's Specialty Coffee, and this was ground for a mocha pot. So uh, we've been using the mocha pot the whole time, but it is a mission to clean it sometimes. So we're gonna switch it up, and we're gonna try Ben's Blend from Paws, which was actually ground for an AeroPress. Um, I mentioned earlier that one of the great things about Paws is that you can actually order from their website and just select what ground you want if you want to buy pre-ground coffee. Not everyone has a, a proper grinder at home to grind their own coffee the way they want it. And even if you do, you don't always know what's right for, you know, AeroPress versus Marker Pot versus Plunger. Um, it does make a difference. So, yeah, we've got this from, from Paws in AeroPress ground. And we're going to go ahead and open it up and make some AeroPress coffee this morning. And the nice thing about this front runner table is that it's got quite a substantial uh, load bearing capacity. It can, it says it can hold 40 kilograms. I wouldn't quite go that far, but you can actually put some force into plunging the AeroPress. Whereas, you know, some of the more flimsier tables won't be able to handle that. We just made our way down to the river with our, our morning coffee and when you stand out here you can see uh, the extent of the flood. We're actually very very lucky that we came on the day that we did and not one or two days earlier because the water level was all the way back there, probably 20 meters that way. It's, uh, it's subsided enough now for Huxley to go take a swim this morning but if we'd come a couple days earlier and taken that same road we probably wouldn't have an, wouldn't have been able to Get across. We're going to be leaving the Buffels River quite soon and uh, moving in a southeasterly direction. I've also heard some good news that the Madingsport Road is open so we don't have to do any crazy detours which is great. So we'll probably spend a bit of time here, have some breakfast, charge some camera batteries and then uh, slowly start making our way towards our next spot which is Eagle Falls. Having fewer kilometers to drive today affords us the luxury of making a proper breakfast and taking some time to soak in the sun on this gorgeous morning. We've quite enjoyed our time here at Buffels Rafir. If you're in the area, this is definitely a place worth checking out and I think that we'll be back here sometime soon looking for a wild camp spot along the river. But for now, it's time to pack up and to begin our journey for the day. The rooftop comes down, Everything gets loaded in the back, firewood goes back on the roof, and we're good to go.
Last evening when we pulled in here we were a little bit rushed and couldn't really see much with the sun already having set. But this morning we can take it slow and really appreciate the unspoilt landscapes around us. With every passing day, the effect of the recent floods becomes less and less noticeable. But some floods are worse than others and we're about to be reminded of just how much damage water can actually do. Just south of our camp spot lies the town of Langsburg, a small Karoo town with a tragic history. In 1981, heavy rain saw the Buffelsafield come down in a severe flood and when it burst its banks at Langsburg, it killed 104 people with 72 bodies never actually found. It was the perfect storm, with three rivers, the Buffels, the Bavians and the Vilgehout, converging right in front of a railway bridge that you can still see here today. Here's a photo of the aftermath of the flood with the bridge in the background. It's believed that some of the trees that were washed down got stuck in the bridge, slowing the flow of the river and causing it to flow into the town, depositing three meters of sediment and burying houses, cars and people. The flow was estimated to be 8,000 cubic meters per second, with the water rising 10 meters higher than its usual flow level. In Langsburg, there's a flood museum that you can visit, as well as various markers around the town that show the water level during the flood. It's a scary reminder of the power of Mother Nature. By a strange twist of fate, the flooding a few days prior had damaged a few of the passes that we were planning to take over the Swatberg Mountains today, with some of them being closed for repairs. So we found ourselves having to reassess our route. Okay, so that's where we camped, just north of Langsburg. Mm -hmm. The route that we had planned was going to go down towards Severvikspur, but then we'd take a gravel road to Prince Albert, and then Swatberg Pass to close to De Rist, and then our camp is right there. So this one big pass is what's closed, correct? Yeah. So, there's so before that they well, it take? may or may not be closed. So the one option we have is to go the same route to Prince Albert, and then if the Swatberg Pass is closed, if we don't see any cars going there, then we can just go this way through Maidingsport, which is right there. So that's the easy option. Yeah, let's do that. Um, the other option is to go Sievervierksport, which is down here which is what we did last time. We did the best of the West. And then we go through Karlsdorp, through Oatswin, and then we come through here. How which is, it's actually, is it's actually a bit quicker. But also that road, we don't know how damaged that road is. Yeah, I'm just so, thinking that's a lot because that is, the whole route is following a riverbed. So mm -hmm. surely that would be the more damaged route of the, if there was any flooding? No, apparently not. Um, but... Yeah, so Maidings puts the, the, the obvious one. The only thing that is we miss a lot of these beautiful gravel roads along the mountain. So that's the only thing I'd be a bit bummed about. I know, but, but I'd it's say, probably I'd the say safest safety, option. Yeah, I'd go to safe for it because uh, do you want another yesterday? No, I don't want another yesterday. Yeah, exactly, let's just play it safe. <laughs> okay, especially now because it's basically 12 o'clock. Yeah, so, okay. we don't have a lot of time. I agree, okay. We, Perfect. We're taking it safe. I will drive from here. You can chill. Do you want to drive? Yeah, I don't mind I'm, driving. I'm happy to drive. I'm actually keen to drive. Cool. Southbound we go. So it was decided. We were going to take the R323 south from Langsburg and then turn off onto an unnamed gravel road, which would be driving on parallel to the N1 all the way to Prince Albert Road. It's a long drive now that I think of it. We failed to notice this yellow sign saying flood damage but there were soon a few signs that this morning's drive may not be smooth sailing. Not
not far up the road, we come across the Flores Kral Dam, which holds back water from the Bilfels River, just south of Langsburg. Apparently, this dam was at 150% capacity during the 1981 flood, with the water flowing right over the top of the dam wall here next to the overflow, something that's definitely not supposed to happen. We never actually planned to pass this dam. We had no idea it was even here, but when you take the road less traveled, these surprises happen. Oh man, it's so rewarding when things work out like this. Before we knew that we were going to get the, the, the Buffels River in flood, uh, we put this route on the map thinking, hey, let's bypass the N1, even if it takes us much longer to drive the road. Uh, let's just take the gravel road, let's take the road less traveled and let's see what happens. And we've now not only seen the Buffels River in flood and all that comes with that, but we've been able to see the Flores Kral Dam, which I didn't even know existed, uh, overflowing, which is probably quite a rare occurrence. So yeah, there are negatives to it, like this river right in front of us here, all these streams that literally have washed away this road. So we've got to go into first gear and kind of crawl over it and then get all the way up. It's going to be a very slow day, but the stuff that we're seeing, the mountains, the, the, the rivers, the streams flowing for maybe the first time in years, this is what overlanding is about. It's, it's about trying to avoid the main roads and to go out and explore and to see stuff. I would just encourage you guys, hey, if you you don't have to travel clear across the country or you know through into a different country to see things. This is kind of in our own backyard and uh, and it's there to be explored, but you have to look outside what your normal route would be and just take the risk, even if you don't know what the road's gonna be like, just get out and do it and you'll be surprised. As we move further along the road, our enthusiasm turns to a little bit of apprehension as the road starts to deteriorate a bit. If you can call this a road, it's more like a riverbed. Ninety-nine percent of this road was actually fine. There were plenty of small washouts that made us slow down so we could never get any momentum or rhythm, but that's okay. As long as we could get through, we were happy. The gates though, wow, let's not talk about the gates. Nicole may get triggered. Nicole is not enjoying open gates. <laughs> Shame. She was not stoked to have to open and close so many gates. And the funny part is that on Tracks for Africa, this road is literally called Many Gates. Aside from the gates, it was all going well. Until suddenly, it wasn't. Ah oh man, bad news. Unfortunately, <laughs> we're probably like three quarters of the way. We, we've been driving for... What's the time, Nanakal? Two o'clock, so 11, 12, 1, 2. We've been driving for three hours and our road is gone, washed away, completely gone. And we're not getting through this one. You can see how these animal tracks just sink right in. It's very soft mud underneath there. So yeah, unfortunately that's the end of the road for us and we're gonna have to turn around and find another route. But that's that it's the way it is. And uh, you have to take these risks sometimes and we just have to work around it. Probably means another late night at camp, but yeah, nothing we can do about it, so let's make the most of it. Here's some context. The river that we got stuck at is the Dweka River, which later joins the Khamka River, just south of us. We needed to get to Prince Albert, and at this point we thought that we would have to go all the way back on this road and then join on the N1. But once we checked a couple of other GPS apps, we found that Tracks for Africa had another road shown that basically cut straight across to the N1 and would save us a bunch of time. I generally don't use Tracks for Africa because it doesn't have the same useful map layers that Gaia GPS has, but it's always good to have multiple databases. You just never know when you might need them.
This is what I love about overlanding. These are scenes that I would never have experienced unless we'd taken these gravel back roads. And despite the detours and the slow progress, we're still having a better time than most of the poor drivers on the N1. I can almost guarantee that. This unnamed road, which was actually in pretty good condition, joined onto the N1 near the Prince Albert Road turnoff, and we soon found ourselves pulling up to Prince Albert, a small but very lively town in the middle of nowhere. Prince Albert seems sort of out of place for a Karoo town, but it's the gateway to the famous Swartberg Pass, so I'm sure that helps to attract tourists. We were still unsure of whether the Swartberg Pass was even open or not, so we decided to bypass it and take the safer and quicker Madingsport Road. We've done the Swartberg Pass on our Best of the West series though, so check that one out if you want to see what may just be South Africa's most famous mountain pass. We are now in the Prince Albert Valley, heading towards Madingsport. It's still a little bit unclear whether the um, Swartberg Pass is open or not, but we're not going to take the risk um, partly because of the time, it's already sort of 4 p.m. and Swartberg Pass is the type of road that you really want to take your time doing and really soak it in. And if we rush through it, we're not going to be able to appreciate it. It's possible that we'll get to camp after sunset, but you know what, it's been a good day, we've enjoyed it, we've seen some cool stuff, so it's all going to be worth it in the end. Meringsport is something that has to be experienced to be fully appreciated. It's like someone had taken a jigsaw and just cut a perfect crack in the massive Swartberg mountains. And these mountains aren't a joke either, they tower well above 2000 meters. Once again, we had timed this to perfection, as just a few days before, this river was flowing over the road. Meringsport continues south, eventually ending in the Klein Karoo town of De Rist, another gem of a town that really should be on your list to visit. On the western side of De Rist, we take another gravel road turn off to our south, taking us towards the Kamanasi Nature Reserve and our campsite at Eagle Falls. This, uh, this golden hour just before sunset is um, the best time to be driving through mountains because you get the sort of layered effect where you can see the distance and size of the mountains um, sort of just one after another uh, just rolling out in front of you and we're in a good spot to see mountains because to our south we've got the Otunipa mountains which with the coast on the back with George and Nasda and the garden route and then we've got the Kamanasi nature reserve to the north and Eagle Falls, the place we'll be staying, is directly between these two sort of mountain ranges. So yeah, beautiful drive. It looks like we may make it just round about sunset, which is great. And uh, yeah, beautiful to be out here in nature and to be able to see stuff and not be driving in the darkness. <laughs> Eventually, this road starts to descend into the Kamanasi River Valley and this has to have been one of the best unexpected surprises of the entire trip. Everything just combined to form the most perfect scene. The golden light, the flowing river and the mountains on all sides. It was perfection. Once again, we found ourselves crossing a river that seemed to get stronger and stronger the further downstream we drove, and at our last crossing, we had water up to the top of our bonnet. took our turn off to Eagle Falls just in time and we were able to watch the sunset on our right as we neared our campsite, catching sight of the waterfall below us.
these last two days home were supposed to be combined into one episode but there's just too much to cram in but in part six we'll be finishing off our shakedown trip with a fantastic evening at the eagle falls campsite cooking some delicious food as usual before waking up the next morning hiking down to the waterfall and then beginning our last push over the Otaniqua mountains as we follow the Kirbooms river down to the flucht we'll also be taking time to look at the magnificent prince alfred pass before heading through the pine forests towards Plettenberg Bay. If you haven't subscribed yet, just do it. It's the only way you're going to know what happens in the next video. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.